What's up guys? Welcome back to Diving Garage. Feels good to be back in the shop. Let's get a few more things ready for our small block Chevy build. Today I'm going to show you how to clean your carburetor for less than $10. Let's dive in. Alrighty, let's go over uh, tools and chemicals required. Uh, what I like to do is get the little bits you need and get a little screwdriver like this. So you don't have to be switching out screwdrivers, losing them. Uh, I, I just like to use these little bits. And if you need a pick, might need some needle nose. Of course, any wrenches. And if you want to speed it up, you can use an impact driver. We'll get the battery. And those same little bits fit right there. So just an option for you. Uh, if you want to use them for removing, or I'll even show you a way for when you're installing the bolts. And as you'll see in front of me, I have a Edelbrock AVS2 and a Quadrajet. And this process I'm going to show you will work for any carburetor that uses a bowl. It could even not be a car. It could be for a two-stroke motor. It could be for some other piece of equipment. Uh, as long as it has a bowl, this will work. So what we're going to do today is try to use this one can of bearing mints. Now I got this in my local auto parts store for six bucks. So I went ahead and got a couple. And I did get one can of Shop Pro Carb Cleaner. So you'll notice one thing missing is the one gallon pail of carb cleaner or sea foam or what have you. And that's because you used to be able to get that one pail for $20. But now that same exact pail with the same exact fluid is 50 and 60 bucks. So if you're trying to do this on the cheap, that's not exactly an option. So uh, let me go ahead and show you the way I do it. You get the same result. The point is you need to get your cleaning solution, even if you don't use this, even if you use something else, you need to get it in the passages because if you try and get this carb cleaner and just shoot it down in there and call it good, not gonna work. You need time. You need to let that stuff soak and um, let it get into all those little cracks and crevices, get all that goop and junk out. So um, let's get into this. Alrighty, let's start by taking off anything on the outside that we don't need. We'll start here with this filter spacer and the gasket. Now guys, you need to run a gasket, okay? I don't care who told you not to, you need to run a gasket. And, alright, let's start by getting these all these levers and little pins out. I like to use my little pick here. Just get in there, pop it out. And I'll tell you right now, if you buy a carburetor, specifically an metal rock, your next purchase should be a carburetor rebuild kit for that other rock because these little pins right here, well you can see that, these tiny little pins, they like to jump and try to escape. So, you're going to need more. <laughs> I've dropped one of these in the engine bay, in the grass, parking lot, you name it. So, you need one of those. A little lever out. All right, let's get our accelerator pump taken apart. All right, look for this Edelbrock accelerator pump. See this little S or Z? It's got a bit of a bow to it. it kind of bows one direction. It that that bow should face the front of the car. So when you're using it, it looks more like that, and it should form an S. See how that looks right there? Just like that, that's how it's supposed to look with the bow facing front, looking like an S. All right, that should do it. Perfect. So now, everything's disconnected, I think so. Now we can start working on the screws that attach the, uh, this is the air horn to the base or the body of the carburetor. We're going to do this like kind of like a cylinder head. We're going to start from the outside and zigzag and work our way to the middle. And then when we assemble it, we're going to work our way from the middle to the outside. Uh, and again, you can use whatever little bit it is that matches. In this case, I believe it's a T25. Yep, this is a T25 bit. And what I'm going to do to help help the process along, get uh, your impact driver with the chuck and just zip them out. All right, so for this particular carburetor, all of these screws here, like all these main air horn screws are the same size, so you don't need to worry about getting them separated. Uh, these here are T15. Let's go ahead and get those out. Now, these ones, I am gonna use a screwdriver attachment because they're not very tight, and I don't wanna strip these out. 
So, and also we don't need to take them all the way out either. Just about halfway out. Grab this here. All right, so this is the part of the bill where you start associating left and rights. So everything that goes on this side is gonna be from, well, to my right, your left of the build. So get everything, keep it on the side that it's supposed to be. That's why I got this paper down too, so that way we can keep track of everything. It'll be easier to see. All right, so those are out, these are out. That should be it. And so this part, just be gentle with the uh, air horn gasket. They're designed to be reusable, uh, but still be gentle with it. All right, before I take this off, uh, just so you know, this carburetor has been sitting for two months since the engine has been out. And what I've noticed is that with ethanol fuel, when it sits in a carburetor bowls, it forms this like weird green alien slime and it clogs up everything. So this, this did run when I took it off, but I want to give it a good clean so we got a good starting point for our uh, first fire up. Let's see if we got any alien slime. Not too bad. We got some like dirt and gravel in here for some reason. Yeah, I don't remember taking this thing off-roading. <laughs> anyway, you can see in here, let me get you a light. There we go. So it's really not too bad. I don't see any of that green alien slime. Overall, it's just crusty. Let me get you a better view. You can see in there, a bunch of just weird crust. Jets aren't super clogged at all, really. The uh, main butterflies could stand for a cleaning. I should got the accelerator pump area. Doesn't look too bad. All right, so you should be able to see pretty well there. Keep this over here. Do not lose this. <laughs> if sometimes it's like, if you don't take um, the bracket off through the accelerator pump, you leave it on and comes attach. If you get this carb, you dump it out all the old fluid or fuel or whatever's in there, this will come out too. Don't lose this. All right, so like so overall, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this to the trash can. Oh, you can take these out too. I'm gonna take this to the trash can, dump all this garbage out, uh, get the compressed air, blow this out, and then we'll keep moving. All right, so from this point on, find yourself some little bins or something. I got these little guys, little parts containers that I've used before. Um, make sure they're decently clean. They don't need to be spotless, really. Um, we're gonna get a couple of these and get them set and ready. We're gonna be putting parts in there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take out the main venturis, uh, primaries, secondaries. Uh, I'm gonna take off the pump, uh, take all that out. And under each of these things is a gasket, right? So what I've done before, if you take these off carefully, you can reuse these gaskets. So let's go ahead and get these bolts loosened up. And I'll, I'll set these aside for each of these. This I'll just put in the middle. All right, you see that little gasket there? Don't forget how it goes on. So don't grab this and rip it. What you wanna do is get your little pick and free it up first. Just gently, gently get in there, free up the gasket, and then you should be able to peel it away. Again, you re this really should survive the cleaning. Just be very gentle and it should be good to go. Put right that right there. I'm gonna grab this, throw it in here. Same on the other side. All right, so as you can see here, this gasket didn't quite make it. If you can see here, a little bit here ripped off. Still down there, a little bit here, but these two are the bolt holes, right? So say you're in a jam, you're on the side of the road, 
for some reason you're pulling your carb apart and taking this out to check it. Maybe you're blowing this out to see if one of your air bleeds is blocked. But um, if you look here at what this part is sealing, it's the bolt holes, right? And then look here at the passages here, here, there's still got a nice gasket area around it. So can you reuse this at this point? At this point, I would say, yep, that's fine. But if it ripped, say maybe here or there, I would say, no, don't do it. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and try and reuse this. And if it causes a problem, I'll go get a kit, no problem. And we'll replace these gaskets, no issue at all. Also probably doesn't help that this, this carburetor has been dry for, again, about two months. So I bet if these were, this was a recent takeoff, I took it off and started doing this right away, I bet we wouldn't be having this problem. They're nice and moist. So that one came off no problem. That's how it normally should be, right? All right, now let's get this off. I think that's a T20. See, I don't think it's a T15. No, let me go grab a T20. Wow. All right, so again, got a little gasket here. I'm gonna gently pry this guy off. Just like that. Perfect, we'll just put him over here, no big deal. All right, so now um, you're at the point to where if you wanna take your jets out, you can, nothing wrong with that. If they look okay, there's nothing wrong with leaving them at this point either. So I'm gonna take this off so it's kind of flat. And now is when we get our juice out, right? So again, we're gonna try to stick to this, just this one can, let's see how far we can get. What we're gonna do is basically, we're gonna simulate the same effect that dipping the car would have. It gets in all the passages, all the crevices, all the everything. All right, so get in your bowl here, fill her up good. And bowl here, fill it up good. Make sure you get in your primary pump. There we go, like that. And then that's gonna also fill up your uh, primaries and your secondaries. But if you want, you can put a little splash in there. Just like that, it's probably gonna drain back, no problem. All right, cool. Well, quick thing about any of the, this type of ingredients. Very flammable very odorous. So make sure you're doing this in the ventilated area. Once I get this filled up, I'm actually gonna open my garage door and run a fan, um, cause it stinks. Uh, you don't really wanna be breathing this in for too long. And um, this is, the, I guess, the base of what we're gonna do. And then after that, situate your venturis here so it'll get nice and soaked. And we'll fill these up. But if you need to, you can kinda prop them up like this, so you don't have to fill up the entire thing. Just like the back corner of what you need. All right, cool. So now, paper shove it under here oh one more thing if you do want you can take out your auto air bleeds spray these out um, you can use the carb cleaner spray on these or you can just shoot air in there kind of same deal make sure you check them make sure they're not um, like damaged to the tip down here you really don't need to jam these too hard when you're closing them just be gentle with them no big deal all right so now to clean out some of the other passageways, get your pump, put it in there and just gently depress it. There you go, see how it's coming up out of there? If you need to, you can add some more. Perfect. So now uh, all the passageways down at the bottom and all of the uh, primaries and secondary venturis are gonna get cleaned up. And if you need to situate them a bit different way, do whatever you gotta do. Just so make their submerged, make sure they're submerged. And that's it. Um, in this video, we're not gonna cover setting floats. 
We're not going to cover metering rods, jets, any of that stuff. All we're doing today is cleaning. So that's it. Um, and now you can let it soak overnight. You can let it soak for a couple hours. Uh, I will probably let it soak for a couple hours. Uh, just because there wasn't any of that green alien slime in here. So uh, there was just like some dust and debris. Who knows what's in the passageways there. Uh, I'll probably just let it sit for a couple hours. Come back and then reassemble it and call it good. And we have, I don't know, maybe a quarter left on our bottle here. So, so far this has cost us six bucks. Not bad, huh? This is what it looks like from my angle. Just got the uh, primary and secondaries. Accelerator pump sitting in there. Got the, uh, the bowls sitting full of fluid. Now I'll tell you, if you let this sitting overnight, most of that fluid is going to be gone. It'll evaporate. But if you just leave it a couple hours, it'll be fine. So, I mean, that's all you got to do. Just let it make sure the passages are uh, filled. Cycle the pump a few times. Get Make sure you get this passage gets filled okay. That's pretty much it. Alrighty, this has been sitting in there a few hours. I didn't really wait too long because it was in pretty decent shape. Uh, but again, if you got any of that ethanol gelling in there, let this be sit overnight. That stuff gets the clogs up all your passages and you can't see all of it either. And again, if you try to use a spray, it's not going to get it all. You have to let it soak. So again, being this one was in good shape, um, I just let it sit a little while, uh, about, I think about two hours now, and um, we're going to throw it back together. So all you do is the reverse, and as you're going along, get the get your air, shoot, uh, shoot all the passageways out, make sure they're nice and clear, don't forget all your gaskets, and up here, and um, put it up together nice and easy. And I'll show you how I do the air horn gasket, um, that's just the way I found it works pretty good, so you get a nice even torque. So let's go ahead and put it back together. I'm going to start with the uh, accelerator pump up here. So I guess what you can do too, instead of fishing them out, you can either go dump this stuff or you can uh, put it back in the bottle and have like a designated like parts cleaning bottle. Uh, similar to what you would do with the, with the gallon dip. Uh, up to you, I am going to go ahead and pour it back, get a little funnel, we'll take care of that real quick. Alright, so I also went ahead and recycled all of the fluids in there. And what you can do now is get your air and uh, blow out all these passageways here. Alright, give all that a quick wipe down, wash out. Um, there's a bit of corrosion on the aluminum body here. So you can uh, you can get your scrub brush, get in there and dig it up. I'll do that a little bit. Um, but at some point, there is a coating on the inside of here. But uh, I don't know if it's the ethanol in the fuels or just the fuel itself. It does eat away at that coating. Uh, especially if you let that ethanol gel live inside of there for any amount of time. It just destroys it. So I'll clean these out a little more and then we'll get back to reassembly. Alrighty, that'll work. You're never really gonna get it looking like perfectly shiny like when it was new. That's, uh, that's a one-time thing. All right, so uh, like I said, let's go ahead and start with the front here. This, got our gasket.
All right, so this is the part I might lose you. So once you have these all run down, maybe snugged up, question is how tight to put these things, right? So what you're really looking for is even pressure. So what I like to do, I like to get my impact driver, put it on the weakest setting, and just give them a couple hugga duggas. You don't need a lot, just a couple of them. Right there, that's it. Just a couple of those on each one. Yeah, you don't really need to crush these things. Um, but that's that's the base of it right there. If you did want to take your jets out, you can get your screwdriver down here, go down there. You need to change them up or do whatever you're doing. Um, but that is the gist of it. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm just getting it all assembled. And then once you do, you can take some time and uh, clean it up on the outside. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but yeah, so let's press on. All right, now for your accelerator pump shaft, you want to lube this up, make sure it's straightish. I'm just going to use some of this. You can use motor oil if you want, but you want to put something on here. Just a little bit of something to help it out. And this is actually a maintenance item too. Uh, as you're, I don't know, looking in your car or truck and you are checking stuff, make sure everything's good to go, tip top, shape right. Throw some oil on that bag, boy. For the idle air bleeds, run them down until they stop. Don't crush them down. And then I like to back them out one and a half turns. So there's a half turn, one turn, one and a half, and then just smidge in. It's a good starting point for uh, whenever you're setting your initial idle. Half turn, one turn, one and a half, smidge in. Lots of conversation to be had on setting those. Just start there and go from there. So you know where you're starting from. And then of course, if you lose track, you can always run them all the way down again and then try it again. All right, so, oh, we don't want to forget these. Little baffles here. All right, no problem. There's a double check. We know we tightened everything. Everything's in its place. I'm gonna have too many leftover parts. <laughs> it's all looking good at this point. You get here, get your uh, cellar pump, guide that into place. Guide everything else into place here. There we go. Looking good. Now I'm gonna use my screwdriver to catch, or, make sure I catch a few threads on here. Get it started okay. I'll run it down with the impact driver. Done. Easy day. Keep moving. This part here is a little tricky. You gotta get the metering rod to go right down into the jet. And sometimes it likes to fight you. There you go, right there. And what you can do, get your pick, hold it down, rotate this guy over, keep pressure on it. And all we're going for here is just a little bit over finger tight. These don't need to be super tight at all. Over there, over there, good to go. Get these linkages hooked back up. Alrighty guys, now if you follow these steps, your carburetor is ready to rock. And before you say, well Ben, it's dirty, it's ugly, I'm not putting that on my car. Alright, well don't put it on your car then. But it's going on my truck and it's going to work great. Um, I know a lot of you Holly guys out there, nothing wrong with the Holly. Uh, this is just the one I got to run for now. Might try out a Holly at some point. But uh, yeah, you could get some spray and you can clean up all around and make it nice and shiny. But with these Edelbrocks, that initial shine you got, uh, if you didn't get the chrome plated one, it's never 
it's never quite going to go right back to that. I don't know why Edelbrock Rock made them that way, but that's what they did. So, cool. One last pretty trick thing we're going to try. We're going to try something new with the fuel inlet. I've never done this before, and I'm going to have to make some hoses uh, to make it fit, but we're going to try something different. We're going to try out one of these guys. It's a fuel inlet to 6AN. It goes on there just like that. So I'll make up some lines and in another video I'll show you the way I make uh, AN lines and I'll get that tightened down. But something else to try, something a little bit different. Um, that's kind of my deal. I like trying mixing things up, trying new things. So that way you, you figure out what works and that's great, but uh, what else works, you know? What if you're in a jam and you only have these other parts and fittings? How are you going to know what to do? Alright guys, that'll do it for today. Got our carburetor cleaned up, ready to go. No alien goo, just some, I don't know, desert rock and sand for some reason in there? I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, it's cleaned up, ready to go. I'm going to try out this new AN fitting I just got. And we're ready to slap it on top of our build here and get that in the truck very soon. And that's all for today. You saw me do it. You saw my method. $6 to clean your carburetor. Don't waste your money on that $60 dip. Not worth it. Six bucks. So, now get out there, dive into your next project. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you like and subscribe, it really helps me out. I appreciate it. Have a good one.